Good evening and welcome. Thank you for joining Introducing McCormick College Live. This is a, a live call-in show like uh, the Wiley Re Resource Center, um, but we will take all calls at the end. Um, my name is Brad Benjamin, and in addition to being your host, I am also a student at McCormick College. Uh, McCormick College is located right in downtown Chicago, right by Millennium Park. Uh, we are the only private two-year nonprofit fully accredited college in Chicago and this is important because it means your credits can transfer in and out. Um, we have six major courses of study including uh, the oldest court reporting program in the nation as well as the oldest paralegal program in the state of Illinois. Uh, and today I will have the privilege of speaking with two women who at one point in their lives decided to reinvent themselves and pursue these courses of study respectively at McCormick College. I will also speak with Marcus Troutman, McCormick College's Director of Admissions, so let's get to it. Uh, many people do not know what a court reporter does or even uh, what a court reporting machine looks like. Uh, do we uh, have one of those? Oh, there it is. Um, this is the machine uh, that a court reporter uses, and uh, he or she records everything um, verbatim, uh, what is said in a courtroom, as well as any number of other places during any type of legal proceeding. Um, and they use this writer to do it. Uh, you will type up to um, 225 words, 250 words a minute um, on this writer um, in the courtroom and other places as well. To my left is Kathy Cortapassi, uh, somebody who is very familiar with these types of machines. Miss um, Cortapassi is a graduate of McCormick College Court Reporting Program and is now the owner of her own captioning business called Voice to Print Captioning. Kathy started her career as a court reporter and for the last 15 years has worked as a captioner and cart, cart provider. Kathy, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. I've just spewed out uh, a bunch of jargon there, um, like uh, captioning and cart, and I'm wondering uh, if you can give our audience uh, a brief explanation of uh, what a captioner does uh, versus a cart provider. Okay. Well, first of all, we all started with that machine that you saw just a few seconds ago. We learned court reporting, the court reporting machine. It's called Steno. And there's actually English letters on those. Uh, those keys produce English letters, not the Greg shorthand squiggles that you might be thinking. So when we graduate, we can do court reporting, but we could also, nowadays, when I, when I began years ago, uh, we only had the one option and that was court reporting. Now we could choose court reporting or we could choose to help people with hearing loss, which is right. really exciting because it's taking the skills that we do best, taking the spoken word, turning it into print instantly and verbatim. And it's helping people with hearing loss, such as um, going to the theaters. They can see captioned performances. Um, I helped a lady um, where her son was getting married, and I captioned for her the wedding ceremony so she could hear it. So oh, it's wow. pretty. It's all sorts of cool things like that, and some drudgery, too. It's still work. Um, but then the, the third thing is where you take th the same skills using the same machine, but you merge it together with the television signal, like you're watching right now, and the audio, and then we integrate that with an encoder, and then you can see the captions at the bottom. So when you're watching the Olympics and you can't understand what they're saying, you have to turn the captions on to understand it's going to be one of us doing those captions. It, it sounds in incredibly daunting, um, but I, I know a couple of people who do this, and they absolutely love it. I love it. I, I'm very glad I've, I've chosen this career, and it's been very good to me, and, and uh, it's... There's still so many possibilities. It, it's really the, your, your imagination is the only thing that's stopping you. I, I feel like we haven't even discovered all the areas that we could use our skills. Uh, I want to get to um, the fact that, you know, few people discover uh, court reporting in high school these days. Um, and uh, right after graduating, for that matter, how did uh, you discover and decide to pursue uh, court reporting um, especially by coming to McCormick? Well, it was um, the deluge of catalogs that they sent to me at the college. <laughs> at first, um, all through college, I wanted to actually be a language interpreter. I had had um, five years of Spanish and four of French, 
and that's what I was going to go to away to college to do. But I didn't know of any local programs, and I didn't want to move out of state. So McCormick kept, you know, every week or so I would get something from McCormick. It was a local school, so I decided to go see it, and it couldn't hurt. And the counselor was taking me around, and she took me so we, I could see inside the classroom where the girls were banging away at that machine. And it just looked so cool. And then she said to me, if you don't like hard work, then this is not for you. And that, to me, sounded like a challenge. And, and I don't back away from challenges, and I'm not afraid of hard work. So I said, sign me up, and I haven't turned back since. It's, it's been a great career, and um, I, I was, at the time, a single mom. And so there's been a lot of changes in my life. But you know, this, this career has been with me through all those changes. As you mentioned, the court reporting program can be very challenging, uh, and I know this as well. Uh, what kind of challenges, if any, did you have to overcome while you were at McCormick? Well, I'm a little different. I got pregnant my first week of oh. school. So I, ha I was on a nine-month schedule at that point when the court reporting program isn't on a nine-month schedule. So after I had the baby, I came back, and of course, you got to work out child care and everything mm -hmm. like that. And then I had to work in trying to come home and then be a mother to a newborn, you know, a young baby. And um, so I, I wanted to be there when I got home from school. I didn't want to be doing homework and everything. So I woke up early in the morning, and 5 o'clock in the morning till 7, I was doing my homework for the court reporting program. I and tried I, that once. I'm sure you were better at it. Go on. <laughs> well, when you get your time with your baby, it really does, you know, you do have the uh, added incentive. But then I also had the, the benefit of the 40-minute 40, 40 or so train ride in, so that gave me some more time to do the book work and the paperwork, and um, then the 40-minute back home again. So I really had all my homework done when I got home from school, and I could actually be a mother. And mm -hmm. so that was interesting. But then um, about... Uh, 12 months into the program, about four or five months before I graduated, um, my the father of the baby decided to leave me and le left me high and dry because he actually was babysitting during the day when I was at school and then I took over at night. And so now what do I do? i got to find child care. So luckily for me, my mother took over um, uh, for those few months so that I could graduate. But it, it, was, it, was, it was interesting and daunting and challenging and scary and um, always, every day I went to school saying, what if my mother quits today? What am I going to do? Right. Um, did McCormick help you at all during this time? Oh, you better believe it. Um, when this was going on and I was, I was freaking about, out about how was I going to graduate, how I was going to take care of my kids, I, I guess I wasn't hiding it well enough from my teachers because um, they called me into their office. It was Don Dalton and Joyce Halverson. And um, they asked me, what's going on? You know, we're just, there's something wrong. We can tell something's wrong. And um, I broke down and told them, and um, to their credit, they, they, they just rallied behind me. I mean, they, they built me up, they, they gave me the confidence that I, that I could succeed at this, and, I, and they, of all things, did not want me to quit. They wanted to see me graduate. And so I felt like, you know, I don't know if they had this conversation with every student. I didn't feel like they did. I felt like they really did take a personal interest in me. And I said, that's it. I'm graduating, and it's because of them, and I did. So, and not only that, I, I, I graduated, the, the speed you're supposed to graduate at is 225 words a minute, but I actually graduated at 260, so I was one of three students at both McCormick campuses at the time to graduate at 260. Did, did you say, hey, you know what, let's, let's throw in a 260 test today, or, or how did, because uh, I would no. never do that. <laughs> I, I, it was just one of those days where um, my mind was just on every word that, the, that, that was proceeding out of his mouth, and, you know, I was just... I was just there. I was just zoned in. I didn't understand. And it, he, he stopped talking, and I'm waiting for him. I thought he's just flipping the page. Or mm. he stopped talking. He stopped talking. He stopped talking. He stopped talking. Maybe it's over. And I did pass the test. Uh, to my amazement, to my shock, to I, it's just it's. Um, I, I had. I think it had a little bit to do with um, God helping me get through the program. But um, a little bit of it was just the skills that they gave me and the confidence they gave me. Yeah. Well, we definitely need to talk more about uh, speed building after the show. <laughs> um, I want to um, get to uh, court reporting as a profession. Uh, I mean, do you think it's a, a difficult profession for a single mother? It, it can be. Um, a, as with any job, if you allow your boss to take advantage of you, then you're going to have a difficult job. If you set per the correct parameters, if you have a plan A and a plan B, if, you, if your child care calls you and says you have to pick up your kid, it's a little bit different. You're in the middle of a courtroom. They can't call you in the courtroom to say 
you know, I'm sorry, Judge, we need your court reporter to go home right now. So I always had to have somebody in case the call came in, then you're the designated person. Um, but when I began doing CART, um, and by the way, CART stands for Communication Access Real-Time Transcription. So um, <coughs> when I started doing CART, that allowed me to, ch to change the schedule, my work schedule, according to my kids. So when they were in school, I was able to work and take them to school, go to work, pick them up from school, and I could work at night when, when they went to bed. So it, it gives a lot of flexibility. Captioning is the same way. You know, it's a 24-hour, how many channels are there that, that need captioning? And so there's a lot of freedom and opportunity. So it's still a hard job. It's still as, you know, but what's nice about it is the harder you work, the more money you make. Yeah. And you take that for granted when you when you see the caption, you figure there's just some big computer somewhere automatically spewing words out to every single screen. It's 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 a it's a it's a reporter working um, either at home or in an office hooked up to a um, um, a, a system that will allow them to caption through the television. Yes, right. it's, well, there are sometimes teleprompted. Um, if you see some of the low budget television news where the reporters are talking and then the captioning is sometimes coming up before they're saying it, that's the teleprompting script being fed in as captions. But then they cut to a live report. You know, there was a murder somewhere or there was a, 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 a water main that exploded. And, you know, so the reporter's on scene and all of a sudden the captions go away. Well, they don't have teleprompt for that. So that's how you could tell the difference. And they don't come back, or, or they come back delayed? They, they come back when the reporters are in the station again. So for oh. the whole time that they are on the scene, there are no captions. So people with hearing loss do not have access to whatever's being said there. But you're saying at times the, repor uh, the reporters are reading the teleprompts, and... Um, so some, so they're always reading teleprompts for the news. Yeah. They're, they're always doing that. But um, they, they do go off script a lot, and so that's mm -hmm. why live captioning is always better. Um, it, it looks like we're running a little low on time, so um, I, I do want to uh, thank you for coming on. Thank you for joining us today. It was a real pleasure speaking with you. Thanks. McCormick College is the perfect place to reinvent yourself. Please give us a call, 312-922-1884. Uh, or uh, check us out at www.mccormick.edu. That's uh, the perfect place to reinvent yourself. 312-922-1884, www.mccormick.edu. Speaking of reinvention, uh, we have a classic case as our next guest. Uh, Erica Green is a recent graduate of McCormick College. Erica, welcome to the show. Thank you. What were you doing uh, right before you came to McCormick College? Right before I came to McCormick College, I was an at-home mom. I had quit my job once I found out I was pregnant at Family Dollar. I was a store manager, and um, I just was at home because I wanted my baby to be able to talk before I sent her to school. I wanted her to be able to tell everything that was going on before I sent her to a daycare. Right. Um, and what made you decide to come to McCormick? Well, actually, I graduated a year um, a year early from high school, and I had seen McCormick College in like 2000, and I didn't really have that much information about McCormick College at the time, so I kind of like skipped over it. And then after like five years of just going to school, going to school, taking up everything under the sun, I was like, okay, I'm gonna give McCormick College a chance. And so I came into the school, <coughs> and I remember um, the first person that I met um, with was Mr. Grassi, Mr. David Grassi. And he took so much time. He sat with me. He asked me what my niches were, what were my craft, what did I want to do. And he gave me an outline from that first invitation that him meeting me gave me an outline of what I really wanted to do. Right. You know, it's funny, Mr. Grassi was the first person I ever spoke to McCormick, over the really? phone while I was on the West Coast. And I figured, all right, I'm going to call the, the school and I'm going to speak to this person. Then I'm going to speak to this person. Um, and he's the first person I got and, and he pretty much knew everything. Yeah. Um, and so after speaking with him a couple of times, I was like, 
I couldn't see myself going anywhere else. Right. And that's how I felt. When I first came, like, the experience in itself was totally different. Totally different. It was very warm. Everyone was very, once you kind of gave them an idea of what you wanted to do, everyone was pushing you. All of the staff was pushing you. I had Miss Morgan. She pushed me a lot. She knew I had, like, a business flair about myself, the things, the projects that I was working on. And she would give me, like, a lot of different outlets to go into um, free legal aid information. She even had a website that she would give the class to go to to try to manage your like entrepreneurship, like different things like that. Mm -hmm. Now you have an accounting background. Yes. How does accounting uh, fit in with paralegal studies? So what happened was when I got to McCormick College, Mr. Grassi told me, he said, you, I love numbers and then I love legal work so he was like get your associates in paralegal studies and he said then go get your bachelor's in accounting and he was explaining to me it's like a double whammy because when you go into a law firm they need a bookkeeper they need an accountant they need someone to track their numbers I'm more of an asset if I have legal information, if I have if I have those tools, if I know how to utilize them. So it's kind of like I can go in and say, okay, this is what I'm worth. So this is what you can give me because I have this under my belt. Right, right. right. Um, did McCormick help you get a job? Oh, yes, it did. <laughs> yes, yes, it did. And it's weird because how I came along with the job was like really interesting. I had a... Um, um, I had a classmate, well he really wasn't a classmate at the time, it was a student that was in the, um, in the computer lab and we were just talking about our business adventures and things like that and he was actually doing an internship with the guy and he told me, he was like, um, you know what, I have a guy you might want to talk to and I was like, okay, and it just so happened, I went to the interview for something else and the president of the company looked at my resume and was like, okay. And to make a long story short, kind of find out my teacher was his attorney. So everything kind of like so worked it works. itself it out. <laughs> so it was like it was really good. But I got that hookup off a, off a student, another student who actually could have gotten that job. Right, right. Um, now that you're out of the program, what are your plans? Um, well, like Mr. Grassi always tells me, my future is bright. And so my goal is, my goals now are I'm in school at Chicago State University taking up accounting. I plan to be done by spring 2014 and I'm going, when I finish graduating in accounting with honors, I'm going to Kent to study transaction oh, wow. law. Wow. Well, I definitely wish you luck with all of that. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Um, what advice for others um, uh, who would like to reinvent themselves or, you know, find themselves kind of temporarily stuck in life like you did right before you came to McCormick? Um, what advice w would you have for these people? The one thing that I would say is this. First, you have to never give up on yourself. You need to find a place that works good for you, a school that cares. I went to school all that time, and I was just another check. I was just another number. No one took the time to help me to see me. So, you know, find a school that's concerned. Find a school that doesn't see you as just a check. Like, just really, it's going to take time to help you to find out the things that you need. And, you know, you have to realize you're taking out money to go to school, so you have to find what's working best for you. And just remember that you're creating an inheritance for everybody. You know, you're, you have to have a legacy. And that school has to bring that in with it. Right. Erica, thank you so much for thank taking you. the time to join us today. Register now for the fall semester at McCormick College. Call 312-922-1884. Or check us out online for more information at www.mccormick.edu. Um, register now for the fall semester. Uh, McCormick College, 312-922-1884. Or check us out online for more information at www.mccormick.edu. Uh, <coughs> My last guest is Marcus Troutman. Marcus is the Director of Admissions for McCormick College. How are you doing? I'm doing all right. How about yourself, Brad? Good, good. Um, we will uh, now be taking call-in questions. Um, 
Before we talk about enrollment, can you tell us um, about the other various programs at McCormick? Absolutely, um, including with uh, core reporting, which um, as Brad mentioned earlier, is the oldest core reporting program in the nation. We also have paralegal studies, which is the oldest program in the state of Illinois, entrepreneur studies, criminal justice, medical office technology, and business administration. Okay. Um, and uh, can you take us through the basic uh, process for enrollment? Um, I mean, is it uh, when's kind of the, the latest you can enroll? Um, some people have various options. They don't know what they're doing until the very last minute. Mm -hmm. um, and I know McCormick can kind of help and sort of jump in and, and help out with the enrollment process a lot. Absolutely. Um, enrolling into McCormick College is very easy. Um, I can give you a story just based on um, an experience with a uh, prospective student today. Um, she called in, she had, you know, heard about our court reporting program. Um, she had, you know, you know, an inkling of trying it out, but didn't know exactly, uh... I'm going to interrupt you. Uh, okay. I'm pretty sure we, uh, have a caller on the line. All right. Well, can I get your name? Hi, my name is Tiffany. Hey, Tiffany, how you doing? Pretty um, good. You have a question for Marcus? Yes, I wanted to know, um, how flexible are the class schedulings, um, can you, do you have like evening classes, weekend classes? Can you talk about that? Yes, ma'am. Uh, we have day and evening classes, actually. Um, at the moment, we don't have weekend classes. Um, there are no classes on uh, Fridays as well, too. Um, but at the same token, it is very flexible. We can work uh, around your schedule as best we can. And um, I personally will help you to make sure that you're um, taking the classes that you need um, in order to uh, be successful and stay on track towards graduating. Oh, that's great. Um, so, um, I, I just want to take a moment and uh, um, thank a couple uh, people for this opportunity. Um, I, I do want to thank uh, Can TV, um, <clears throat> uh, our, our guests, um, just in case we run out of time, uh, Kathy Cortapassi, Erica Green, and of course, Marcus. Um, as well as um, my producer and the director of communications for um, McCormick College, uh, Bonnie Tucker. Um, and uh, last but not least, um, Dr. Uh, Marnell Alexis Stevens, uh, the president of McCormick College. Thanks. Um, so. So if you like, um, I can elaborate, you know, just a little bit more on the uh, absolutely, absolutely. Well too. Um, you know, as I stated, you know, with the uh, flexibility between evening and uh, the day classes. Oh, looks like we have another caller. So, uh, caller, can I get your name? Hi, my name is Mary. Hey, Mary. Hey, Mary, how are you doing? I'm doing well. What's your question? Yes, I was just calling in. I'm really interested in McCormick, and I was wondering, how does McCormick differ from any of the other um, city colleges or community colleges in the area? Well, one of the things I like uh, about McCormick is that we're really, um, I, I want to say, family-centric. Um, once you walk through our doors, um, you're a part of the McCormick family, and we take care of our family. Um, our class sizes vary from 5 to 15 students, which a lot of our students love as well, too. All right. <laughs> and, and, and then, and, <laughs> yeah. yeah, and... Um, it's just a, we, we really are looking to support our students and be there for them. As you heard from the stories from the previous um, two students that um, graduated successfully from McCormick and are going on um, with their professional lives, um, I think that sets us apart from any other larger institution that you may find. And we're fully accredited on top of that as well, too. And, and I just want to mention um, kind of my own story. I moved back um, from uh, Los Angeles a couple of years ago, uh, not being 100% sure kind of uh, what I was, um, you know, what I was getting into. Um, and uh, I, I don't think I could have done this at any other school. McCormick uh, has been um, a great experience uh, for me. So uh, I think that is um, about all the time we have. Um, once again, I'd like to thank all our guests. I'd like to thank the staff at McCormick. Um, and uh, for further information, yeah. um, just visit www.mccormick.edu. That's M A C C O R M A C.edu. Register now for the fall semester at McCormick College. Um, you can reach me at 312 922 1884, extension 201. Thank you for your time tonight. Thank you.